This is the new MSR D1K, the 21700 cell version of popular D1 pocket thrower. However, this time we do have a special edition with SFN 60 emitter producing nearly 8000 lumens from such a tiny little flashlight. This thing is just a monster, so let me show you what it does in real life. Hello YouTube, Flashlight Enthusiast here. Again, I got this one from one of my sponsors and friends. Many thanks for that. This is the special edition of D1K, newly released D1 version of, you know, longer, bigger battery. So, typical package from Hank, obviously the model, the LED used and the color of anodization and inside Nothing crazy really, we got a standard lanyard from MSR and double o-ring replacement. Here we do have this red o-rings indicating high quality. Always nice to see that everything looks just as expected from Han Kwang. Always a pleasure. Thank you, Hank. And when it comes to the flashlight itself, this is a classic design from Hank. I do have the older model, the D1. So as you can see, we do have similar design with some longer battery tube, some wider knurling, but the head looks quite similar. We do have identical diameters of head. Looks quite identical. However, when you take it on a scale, you can see that somehow the D1 has more substantial and heavy head than the D1K and same goes for the whole flashlight. So my problem with recent Hang Wong production is that he did release the 21700 cells version of flashlights, for example, D1K, DT8K, but all those flashlights are somehow thinner and lighter to, to compensate for bigger battery, and that's why the performance is not what I would expect from bigger and more mighty battery. Really a shame, Hank. Really a shame. But coming back to the D1K, this is a really attractive design. We've got some nice cooling fins here with anti-rolling features on that one. Stainless steel bezel, a standard nice heavy knurling on tail cap. Also to let you unscrew that tail cap easier. Nice prominent red o-ring, perfectly made threads. And here we also got the key selling point of Hank's flashlights, the beryllium copper springs to ensure the great current flow, etc. Obviously the magnet in the tail cap. I'm missing D1K sign on the tail cap, it's just a standard MSR logo here. And obviously I'm running this one on a Samsung 40T to ensure the current is good. Down there also we can unscrew the head, but look at the thread portions here, much shorter so that the heat transfer from the head might be affected. And always a pleasure to see the driver contact here. Obviously, we do have some reflashing pins here to change the software for newer version, but in copper spring, etc. Looks really clean and professional. Always a pleasure to look at Hang's design. Really good job here. It is great to see that we do have standard linear attachment that does not affect tail standing of the light that we cannot see on some older construction. So good direction here, Hong. Thank you for that. And in the business end of this flashlight, we do have this quite big orange peel reflector with gigantic LED. This is the SFN 60 5500K, almost 8000 lumens and turn on. This is the Chinese LED, similar to XHP 70.3, high intensity, similar size, but the luminophore, uh, so the, the part that lights up is really substantially larger. As you can see, we've got XHP 70.3, high intensity, high CRI here, 5000K, and you can clearly see the, the difference in 
Luminophore area between the XHP70 and SFN60. Anti-reflective coating, obviously greenish one to reduce the greenish tint effect. Very nice, I like that. So overall, we also do have the lighted switch. I'm not sure if you can see that, but this is the amber one. Uh, we do have different variants on the Hanks website from red, cyan, green, blue, uh, but also RGB, which means that you will have different colors in under one single switch. I highly recommend checking this one. It looks gorgeous in real life. Magnetic tail cap is always highly appreciated. D1K does use Unreal 2 as a main software, so if you need a complete tutorial, please check mine on the channel. Uh, however, I will present to you main features. So one click for on, one click for off, obviously hold the switch from off to enter the lowest mode, and then hold the switch to ramp up and down the brightness level, double tap for turbo mode. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. And then you can also double tap from off for max ramp, then double tap again for turbo output, one click for off, and then you can also check the battery status after some short turbo bursts, so one, two, three from off, and we're counting one, two, three, four, pulse one, two, so 4.2 volts, which is full. You can also change the stepless dimming to stepped modes when in on position, one, two, three, and then we do have set modes instead of smooth ramping, one, two, three from off, to turn it on again. So these are basically main features that you might use uh, if you need more uh, info. Check out my tutorial on Android. So here are my lumen measurements of the D1K on SFN60. If you need more time, feel free to pause the video. When it comes to the performance, unfortunately, the SFN60 will generate a lot of heat. So as you can see, after 12 seconds, we've got a huge drop of brightness, but still from over 7,264 lumens. So after 30 seconds mark, which is ANSI standard, we've got 1,384 lumens, mind you. And after 40 seconds mark, we have like 800 lumens, then the slow brightness increase, mind you, typical for Unreal Hot Rods. But after those small brightness fluctuations, the output is sustained at the 940 lumen level, which is just incredible for a flashlight this size and with such a lightweight head. So obviously I set the thermal limit for 70 degrees Celsius, mind you, in the flashlight, but it is stabilized at 59, so it's still quite hot, mind you, but the overall runtime on Samsung 40T was 1 hour and 38 minutes. And of course the max ramp measurement here, as you can see, we've got around 3638 lumens after 11 seconds, so I get the impression that the drop was actually sooner than in turbo output. But nevertheless, after 30 seconds mark, we've got 1,233 lumens, so international standards measurement, and then feather brightness decreased to around 1,249 lumens after 38 seconds mark. The slow brightness increase, again typical for Android hot rods, and then after the brightness sustained, we've got around 60 degrees Celsius measured in the head, and sustained around 900 lumens for around 1 hour and 40 minutes before flashlight started to step down to lower modes, typical again for Android Unreal. So the performance is really quite satisfying, judging again that the, the weight of overall flashlight in the head. So this is this is really nice. For contrast, I've got the turbo runtime graph for the D1 V2 on XHP 70.3 high intensity 5000K 90 CRI. So as you can see, the initial output is much much lower, around two and a half thousand lumens, and the brightness actually increasing from the start to achieve its max potential at around 2760 lumens after 2 minutes and 15 seconds mark, mind you, so quite a long distance there. Uh, and then the series of long, long slow step downs occurred and uh, around one. 240 lumen level uh, is achieved after several minutes and then as you can see we've got around 1220 lumens sustained with overall runtime of 1 hour and 12 minutes mind you this is a samsung 35e battery so highest possible capacity and uh, obviously i set the thermal limit to 70 degrees as always i try to standardize here and the flashlight body stabilized at 58 degrees Celsius, mind you so so this version can definitely sustain higher brightness, around 300 lumens higher. However, the initial brightness, the turbo performance is not that impressive as with SFN60 emitter version. 
In terms of beam shots comparison, let's make it Hanks only. So we've got the D1K on SFN 60 as a main competitor. I would go with the D1 standard on XHP 70.3 high intensity, 5000K 90 CRI. And then I would like to go another 21700 cells from Hank. Uh, this is the D4K on Mix Nichina 519A. Last but not least, 21700 cell variant of DT8, so DT8K again on Mix Nichina 519As. See how they all compare in the forest. Oh boy, oh boy, so as you've seen from the beam shot section and runtime graph section, this thing is a true monster and hot rod. Actually, probably different emitters would make much more sense in such a tiny little compact flashlight. But if you're looking for hot rod, then uh, this emitter in this particular flashlight gives you a ton of fun. 
well, maybe SBT90 is still a better choice inside this particular head if you need a little bit more throw, but instead of output, this one is unbeatable. So I really regret Hank did approach this bigger format of flashlights, you know, removing the material and making it lighter because it does really castrate the performance of the flashlight. Well, it is as it is, I really regret he did that, but we have to live with that and uh, tell it openly that we don't like it, so I don't like it, definitely. So guys, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button for more videos to come and to support the algorithm on this channel. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section down below. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate the support and we'll see you in the next one.